Welcome back to The Real Mark Bagwell, a wrestling docu-series. I am your host, The Chosen Lawyer. Today on our program, we have a returning guest slash co-host. He's amazing. He's fabulous. I consider him a brother. He is Jerry, all good in the hood. Jerry, welcome back to The Real Mark Bagwell. Yo, what's up? So, Mr. First Cousin, I like how you have the sign in the back. It says family because... You and Mark are truly family, literally almost brothers growing up. Uh, it's been a while, Jerry. We've uh, had uh, Mr. Howard Helm on for a few episodes now. Uh, we did. That last one will be launching shortly at the time of this taping. And you've been catching Howard and his exploits with wrestling theme songs? Yeah, it's been great. I enjoyed it. I uh, never really knew how much uh, went into it. And after watching and listening, uh really really great great series yeah i thought so as well it's the man is literally a legend in the wrestling world as far as the creation of theme songs with jimmy hart jimmy's in the back right there and it's uh more to come because through howard and his name dropping i'm very excited to say for the first time we're gonna be bringing on somebody that has never been seen before uh we've heard his voice but we've never been able to associate the face to the voice. That is part of Mark's uh, wrestling theme song, American Males. And we have located the lead singer of American Males. And he'll be coming on and singing a cappella for us, American Males. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, that's great. I love it. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. I don't know how you track him down, but you're pretty good at tracking everybody down. So it's going to work out. and I can't wait to see it. Well, listen, slowly but surely, I mean, you and I found each other through social media and we became friends. The series was born, the real Mark Bagwell. So we all come together at some point or another. Um, I'm still working on tracking down uh, from the Buff Daddy theme song, the female singer who sings the chorus. She is alive. She is around. Uh, I will find her eventually. So we're working on that. And the gentleman who played guitar on Buff Daddy, unfortunately, has passed a few years ago. So we will not be able to have him unless he came on through a seance. But uh, we are going to find them all slowly but surely and talking about Mark's story and everything that is Mark Bagwell. That'll be great. So let's go jump in, Jerry. You know, one of the first things is uh, a lot of stuff has been thrown around in the media over the last few days. So we are going to take the buff Bagwell approach to life right now, you know, uh, becoming his friend, having enough conversations with him that I've had uh, through the past few months. One thing buff always says to me is never, ever apologize. Always tell it straight. Don't sugarcoat it. Just jump in and go for it. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. And people are going to be messaging and they've already been messaging on our social medias. And it's about Mark that he's currently um, through DDP, Dallas, Diamond Dallas Page. Dallas announced recently that Mark has entered a rehab facility. He's gone off to get looked after. And we wanted to send out a message of positivity and goodness because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And of course, you know, those arm check, armchair quarterbacks that are watching on social media and giving their comments. And we wanted to let everybody know from a positive standpoint, this is a very good thing and wishing Mark, you know, the best on a speedy recovery. No doubt, uh, for sure. Uh, the armchair uh, quarterback phrase there is uh, always easier said than done. And with him, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's tough, uh, no matter what you're, what you're dealing with. Uh, it's always easier said than done. And everybody's got their thing, you know, whether it be a drug or a cigarette or candy or whatever, we're all, we're all onto something. And, you know, it's like losing weight. You could say, you know, Hey, I weigh 280 and I'm going to lose 40 pounds this month. And then when you dig in and say, well, you know, what? I'm not going to eat candy anymore. I'm not going to eat hot dogs every day. Um, it's tough. Um, as you know, being a bodybuilder and, uh, uh, he being he's actually bust my my personal dietitian, and uh, when I get a you know a few pounds on me or whatever, you know he he helps me out because it's it's tough. I couldn't do it you know by myself. But uh, nope, uh, everything looking for uh, better days for sure. 
And uh, from there, we're going to kind of let everything play out and hope for the best. One of the things I want to throw out to people, you know, it's uh, not everybody is privy to the inner circle, so to speak. And you read headlines and, you know, there's something about society, Jerry, that they love to see you rise and then they love to see you fall for some reason. And then they love to see you rise again and fall again. And it's like people almost get off on it as far as watching people go through different life cycles of it. And uh, Mark and I have a very common close friend that I've been keeping in touch with over the past few days. And, you know, unless you've actually spoken to him recently and been with him, you know, all you're going to know is based on Dallas's announcement and what you're going to read in the media and, you know, people pulling up pictures from a couple of years ago or one video where somebody got him on a bad day and whatever be it. But that, you know, one picture, one video doesn't express the person of who they are. And one of the things I want to tell people is to watch the last episode of The Real Mark Bagwell, where it was your, yourself, me and Mark. So the three of us are on there together and we, we taped three episodes there and watch Mark in action. Like that was taped not that long ago. Mark, I would say, is one of the highest points that I've seen him in a long, long time. The energy was there. The stories were flowing. He was as positive as you can get. Talking him on the phone. The last time we spoke on the phone, his energy was amazing. This was a couple of weeks back. And I got to tell everybody, you know, for those fans out there that are worried for him and, you know, are, are you know, scared as far as what they're reading in the headlines, no Mark you know, is in a very, very good place. And from a positive standpoint, never sounded better, great energy. And like everybody else he is human, you know, and you have a good day, you have a bad day. And sometimes it's just an accumulation of a lot of things, but don't let one incident, one picture, one video define, go and look at the archives, watch the stuff and know that, that is the real Mark Bagwell at the end of the day, a positive, happy person. Uh, his friends are saying the same thing. And Dallas even iterated that when he made the decision with Dallas and family that he was going to go to rehab, Mark never, ever sounded better. He's very positive about it. He's excited about it. So these are all good things, people. Yeah, no doubt. Um, what you said is 100% correct. Uh, can't let one one deal, you know, one bad apple spoil everything. And uh, he is in a great place and getting the help that he needs. And uh, his favorite, one of his favorite cliches is that uh, haters going to hate. And like you said, they want to see a fall. They want to see something bad. They want to see, and that's with everything, you know, like if Aaron Judge has hit 50 home runs this year and tomorrow it comes out, he's got a cork bat or he's taking steroids and he, everybody in the world that loves him is going to say, I knew it. I knew, I knew that he, and, and they did, they were cheering him on. But like you said, they love to see the fall, and uh, it's just the way it is. It's just, uh, it's just human nature, and uh, you know, just it, it happens. And just do the best you can. And to reiterate on what you said about the last, uh, the last three or four episodes that we did, uh, the three of us, uh, he was completely perfect, uh, alert, uh, no drinking, no, no anything, and. Uh, you know, I, I know it more than anyone, of course, naturally enough. Um, but, uh, you know, things happen and, you know, uh, you don't let it get you down and you try to stay positive and, and it's just the way it is. You know, for the average person and the lifestyles that we live, it's very hard to comprehend what it's like to be a celebrity, you know, and people say, wow, they have it so easy. They're making all this money. They don't have to do anything. It's fantastic. I wish I had their life. It doesn't work like that, folks. I mean, the when you're in show business, you are working 10 times as hard, you know, than not being in show business. It's, it's amazing what is put onto you. Like, I went back and looked, for example, at Elvis. When Elvis passed, I believe he was 42 years old. Look at how many movies, how many albums, how many concerts the man gave in such a short, limited amount of time. It's amazing. He didn't destruct sooner, you know? And then, you know, I, cause I love, I love, uh, I love music. I love concerts. I love rock music. And, you know, it's, it feels like wrestlers, 
athletes, you know, a bands, lead singers, they're all in the same category. They have the same pressure, you know, as far as going from town to town when you're on the road and how much is accumulated. So, you know, for every Mick Jagger out there, and Mick Jagger, based on the lifestyle that he lived, you know, could have been gone a thousand times over, but he still has today, fortunately. I'm thinking of uh, Scott Weiland from the uh, Stole Temple Pilots. Uh, you remember that band? I do. So I was a huge Scott fan. And I remember when Scott, you know, was involved in Revolver, Stole Temple Pilots, and, you know, mm -hmm. he had really great points and then low points. I mean... You think about it, he auditioned, he still made it into Velvet Revolver with all with all his issues and found the way and still recorded the albums with them, but it didn't end up working out. And I remember in his last final year, and Scott Weiland had his own band now, The Wildabouts, and he was on tour. The man seemed like he was literally giving concerts every day of the week. So I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. In the span of one year, he was here at least three times giving shows. So if you can imagine he was here three times, how many cities he was touring in such a short amount of time. And he had a lot of demons and everybody knew this and still found a way to come back up. But it was but it was tricky. And I remember watching him between sets and going off to the side and grabbing the Corona that was hiding behind one of the speakers, grabbing a few sips. And I said to myself, this can't be good. This just cannot be good. He's with his new bandmates. A lot of them appear very young in their 20s and 30s. He's on the road so much. Something's got to give here. This isn't good. And I, I'll never forget, Jerry, when I woke up one morning and I opened up my phone and there were like 30 text messages. And it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, uh-oh, something bad happened. And it was all my close friends that knew I was a big Scott Weiland fan telling me that Scott had passed away. Oh. And, you know... Uh, it, to me, when, when Scott died, rock music died, you know, like he was the last big one for me. And there was a groups of people that mourned him and other people that almost seemed to savor in it and saying, you know, I told you so. And this is the road he's going down. And that's where I'm going to tell people, you know, from a social media perspective, you know, Mark Bagwell is very, very strong. You know, he doesn't go off and start reading everybody's comments and letting it get to him. He sticks with the positivity. He knows those true fans that reach out to him. And I'll give the man a lot of credit as far as his strength, his intestinal fortitude. And, you know, for those that want to see him fall, that are looking for badness, I think you're going to be waiting for a long time because Mark is so strong mentally and working so, so hard. And from the past year perspective, you know, Mark and I talked a lot about it. 2022 is his year. It was going to be his year. It's going to be his year. Is his year, you know? And the reality show with Diamond Dallas Page being filmed, uh, Change or Die. And think about the title there, Change or Die. That's a lot of pressure because, you know, you got to change or you're going to die. And he said that openly. How, no how, how long Mark has been on the road for? Look it up. How many conventions the man's going to every single weekend, catering to the fans, meeting them. And that's one of the things I said to Mark, you know, on the phone a lot of times, buddy, if there's one fault I can ever say for you is at some point you have to say no. You know, you're giving so much of yourself when opportunities come up and you want to do everything. You want to be there. You take on a lot, but that's a lot of pressure. And you were talking about myself in the bodybuilding days. When you have the pressure that's mounting it on you, you got to meet certain targets, timelines, everything else. It's very, very hard for people. And very often, it's easy to go to a crutch or something else. And we're not going to get into as far as what particularly, from Mark's perspective, why he's in rehab. But the bottom line is, he's human. A lot of us are human. And you know, a, an item can feel like a small pressure, big pressure. But when you're going through it continuously, it's not easy. And that's where I give Mark all the credit in the world that he survived for as long as he did with the workload that he takes on. And that he was man enough to say, you know what? I need a break now. I hear you. And I'm going to do this. No doubt. Uh, like you said, it, it will take a toll on you. Uh, the average human doesn't realize what they go through from start to finish just on the road. They don't show up and, and do a show. They don't show up and look like he looks. Um, you know, I, I've lived it firsthand with him. And, um, um, it's tough uh, from start to finish. I mean, it's a routine. And, I mean, you stick by it or you don't look like that. And, uh, 
you know, he just going through it, you know, it, it's tough day in, day out. It's like a full-time job, 80 hours a week. And uh, he, he wanted to do it, and he did it, and he succeeded. And I guess, you know, up until the, he broke his neck in the ring in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, and almost died three times, um, you know, it was tough. Uh, the medications the doctors gave him, for, you know, for his neck and those kinds of things, um, it, it, it's tough. Uh, to this day, I don't know exactly the percentage, the usage that he has, you know, of his neck, but it, I know he still has pain with it. Um, but, but it is tough being out there in the limelight, being, uh, you know, having, if you ride to Taco Bell and you're at home and you have to get ready, stage ready to ride to Taco Bell, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's tough. And, uh, it's just one of those things, you know, those comes with the, comes with the territory. And I really like that point you're making there, Jerry, <laughs> because what Mark went through as far as with the neck surgery and breaking his neck, you know, for an average man, they may not have been walking again after what he went through, you know, and he persevered. And not only did he walk again, he made it back into the ring and made it back on top and not an easy feat whatsoever. But that being said, once you go through something like that from a health ailment standpoint, it lives with you forever. For any of you who've ever broken your hand, broken your leg, you know, it's never the same, no matter you got a cast and you got healing and everything. It's a rehab therapy. It's never quite the same. And Mark has gone through a lot of physical ailments and, you know, there's good days and there's bad days. You know, there are days that it's very difficult to get up and even put on a pair of pants and look at how many wrestlers in that, in, in his profession have passed away at the age of 50 or younger. It's a heavy toll. You're on the road, sometimes 300 plus days a year. How many cities you're going to. Um, a friend of mine was mentioning to me watching uh, recently in WWE, Austin Theory, and looking at his uh, posts. You know, you're wrestling one night. The next morning, you're already back into another city. You're wrestling in the next night in the whole different city. When do they sleep? And guess what? They have to sleep. They have to eat. And they have to train. And they're finding a way to do this where they're on a bus or a plane almost all the time. You know, I give wrestlers a lot of credit. They put a lot through their bodies and their minds. And it's amazing how many of them, you know, are able to do that and not burn out at a young age. But we've lost too many of them too soon because it is a tough, tough, tough grind. And Mark has been a wrestling lifer and from a young age and how long he went through the stages. And, you know, we talked about before about you guys on the road and going from city to city and wrestling for a hot dog and a Coke. And he did it for the love of the sport. And... Again, it, it but it, but it catches up to you. You know, he's in his early fifties now, and still keeps his upper body very strong because he's putting that time in. He's going and still training, still eating well. You know, Mark is a believer in all protein, so he's finding a way to eat while still filming the series with Dallas. It's been going on for a few months, plus going on the road every weekend for the conventions. And again, my hats off to him. Mark Bagwell is one of the hardest workers that I know. And I, I don't think enough people realize what he's putting into to rebuilding as far as his image and, you know, creating, you know, as far as people understanding the new Mark Bagwell, the real Mark Bagwell through this series and what you're seeing, that is him. He's a fun loving guy. He's a good hearted person. And all the people, you know, that, you know, want to piss on him or want to kick him when he's down. Think about it again, because you could have been in those spots as well. And it's always great to have the fan support. No doubt. Um, you said something there. Uh, you know, as far as the, the road is tough, it's long. Um, you're going to come up the bumps in the road. Um, you keep going and you pick everything up and you keep going. And, and he's a go getter and he, he will come through it. Uh, you said taking a toll on their body. I, I, can't explain to you uh i think the first time rick steiner body slammed me in the ring i was like there's nothing to this there's nothing you know come on i could not walk literally for about two days i mean just if you, you think it's a joke and you hear all the 
you know, it's fake and uh, this is that and this and that and it's staged and everything. Go work out for about two days and you'll have a different perspective. I mean, no doubt. I mean, it, it is uh, it's tough, but uh, better days are ahead uh, nice. for him. Uh, we've been at the farm. Uh, gosh, how long now? We've been down here at the, at the farm for uh, – a couple of weeks now getting ready for deer season. Uh, deer season opens up September the 10th. Um, we're going to get him back down here with us and everybody. Um, I talked to his other, his older brother today, Steve. Um, he's really fired up about it as well. But uh, uh, we moved ships here. We jumped, we're, we're at the lake house now. We're, uh, I got to give a shout out now to my school teacher. Don't forget, the, you don't let the editors cut this out, but it's uh, Miss Kelly Wall at Jasper County Middle School in Monticello, Georgia. Um, we're at, with her, I'm with her at the lake house and uh, we're just fishing, you know, doing what we can and spending money. I think she spends about $3,000 a day on Amazon. I showed you a picture of the floor in here of the packages. You'd, you'd, you'd laugh, but uh, uh, we're having fun. We're going to get Mark down here with us uh, soon. Um uh, if you get a chance to drive down and take you a couple hours, come on down. You're always welcome. I appreciate that. Well, I know we're going to see each other in Georgia very soon. One of these days, certainly. Sure. Um, the last time I, I was in Florida, it worked out that Mark was in Kentucky, so it just didn't work out. But uh, big convention coming up, wrestling convention, November 25 to the 27. That's my birthday weekend. And it seems like the whole wrestling world is going to be conglomerating onto Winston-Salem, North Carolina. You will be fishing at that point, you were saying, but uh, I'm going to do my best to make it there. And Mark is scheduled to be there as well as it seems like a hundred other wrestlers. So if you're a big wrestling fan. Check that out. That's going to be a good one. And uh, yeah, we hope we will. We hope to have Mark back very, very soon. Uh, that's one of the great things about this series being the real Mark Bagwell is uh, with Mark's big, busy schedule, will Mark be able to come on? He will come on. We will share stories. Otherwise, we bring on people from all around his life, uh, such as yourself as family and, you know, having Howard Helm, who uh, experienced a lot with uh, Mark as far as getting his theme songs going. And you never know what guests we're going to get. But uh, the Bagwells are definitely a fun, loving bunch. We've learned um, through the game called, uh, what, what was it called? Break lighting? Break light? Break, break lights. Break lights. So that's a game that we should not be playing anytime soon. But that was one that they played back in the day. But you know, it's it's just so funny. Anybody and everybody that has ever been connected to Mark Buff Bagwell that I've come into contact with, when I when I saw Jimmy Hart, Jimmy got so excited. He's like, tell Mark, tell Mark. I say hello. I hope he's doing well. Ah! And he goes so he got That's so him. happy. That's good. That's Howard him. Helm. That's good. Howard Helm was very excited. He said Mark was a young, polite young man. And as far as uh, when they were meeting together doing the theme song. And it's just very, very consistent. You know, he truly is that Southern gentleman like his dad, as far sure. as the, the name goes. And and it's not a surprise, you know, be, uh, you know, where you guys grew up and the manners that you were brought up with, you know, it, it shows through your personality and Mark's personality. And that's where when I'm talking to you and I close my eyes, I feel like I'm talking to Mark. But that's where also, you know, uh, as far as in wrapping up, as far as uh, Dallas's message uh, the other day, one of the things that Dallas did bring into in, into it, and I'm not going to name names here right now, though people would want me to, but it's the people that are close to Mark, and there's good people that care, and there are good people that care but enable, you know, and that's sure. and and that happens to all of us, like you know, especially when you're growing up with somebody or somebody you know does something nice for you, and you just build a relationship from there. You learn to trust, and Mark is a very trusting person. When you show Mark respect, he shows respect back and he builds relationships that way. And Mark, you know, he's on the phone all the time because we were always texting him, calling him. And, and he's and, you know, he's really good that way. But on that's but on that token, you know, just to think again for all of us, whether you're in high school, university, college, work, family, sometimes the people that are closest to us that love us are the ones that hurt us the most, you know, and especially when you're under a lot of pressure and you're relying on people, you know, to kind of pick you up or be there for you. Sometimes it's important, you know, for people to help steer you in the right directions. And one of the things, because Mark has such a big personality, it's really hard to say no to him. 
And, you know, that's something I've talked about him with them as well, as far as the inner circle and the people that hang around. And, you know, I'm glad Dallas raised that. And, you know, Mark will definitely be assessing that. He's been assessing that for a while. But for all of us, let that be a life lesson to all of us. Think about the people that are closest to us and who's really helping us and who's not. And sometimes it's not that bad to say to somebody, I love you and I know you care for me, but you're not good for me right now. So we can't really hang out, you know? Sure. They need to, you know, hey, give him some tough love. And uh, like I say, always again, back to the original uh, statement, I guess, easier said than done. And I spoke to uh, Buff Daddy's daddy, if you will, a.k.a. Big Steve, um, two or three times over the past 10 days, if you will. And, uh, you know, he's hoping for the best, you know, for sure. And he um, he hates to see, you know, anybody in this predicament. And, uh, you know, uh, like touching on what Dallas said, um, you know, and Dallas kept it, you know, very clean. And I, and I know as a family, we appreciate that. And, uh, Dallas has always been professional. And, 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 of course, as far as, you know, he and the Judy, uh, Mark's mother, you know, they were real close. They had their own relationship. And uh, I was trying to think here dallas bought a car from our family i think that's where it, i guess it started in, in in the wrestling the wrestling and then uh then of course a car thing or whatever but we went somewhere like to montgomery alabama with dallas and golly that was that had to have been early 90s uh uh you know i i, I don't remember the whole story there steve is mark's older brother you know, had something to do with that, but uh, uh, but Dallas has been a, a great friend. You know, back on that, and uh, the liver die or change or die, rather, excuse me. Um, uh, that 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 helped a, a whole lot. And you know, I don't know as far as continuing or when everything airs or, or whatever. I haven't talked to Dallas in some time, but um, you know, just hoping for the best for for you know Marcus at the you know. And 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 w when I first started talking to Mark, you know, one of the first things I raised to him was, I don't know your relationship with Dallas, but that's somebody that's known for helping others, especially in the wrestling community. The work he's done with Jake the Snake, the work he did with Scott Hall while he was alive, you know, and Scott, you know, meeting his end, not related to his demons, but just unfortunate circumstances from a health perspective. But, you know, look at look at Jake. Jake did not get fixed overnight. Jake was start, stop, start, stop. It took him quite a while, you know? And for even sure. still, every day I'm sure for him is a struggle. Every day he has to make that conscious decision to make good choices. And having the support of Dallas is huge. And I said to myself, if there's anybody who could do this, it's Dallas. And that's where it's so warming to my heart to know that Dallas is in this corner. Dallas has not given up on him. Dallas, if anything, is putting more energy into him than ever and that's so great to see because Dallas is a fantastic human being and the work that he's doing in the wrestling community and giving back, helping others through DDP yoga. The man is a saint. And I only see good things happening for Mark being associated with Dallas. Um, going through the, you know, we saw the clips of the Mr. Rogers and people messaging me on Mark Bagwell, Mr. Rogers and with the gray hair and the cardigans. And people love it. People love seeing Mark without the sunglasses and the top hat and letting it go gray and embracing his inner Jonathan, you know, as far as going gray in the beard. And it works for him, you know, and it's a different side of him. It's the evolving Mark. It's the aging Mark, like the graceful, you know, uh, distinguished Mark. And that's where it's headed. And, you know, that's a Dallas is prompting and Dallas is doing great things for him. So I was really glad to see that Dallas posted that message. I, I agree with you. I think it was, you know, very straight to the point, heartwarming. Uh, wasn't sugarcoating it, wasn't bashing him, just giving it straight to the fans on behalf of Mark, helping him now make those decisions. And so for those fans out there, and there's millions and millions out there who love Marcus Buff Bagwell, and this being the real Mark Bagwell series. And, you know, and, and tell people all the time, please subscribe, hit that uh, notification bell for when we have new episodes, we launch every Saturday and giving the real story of Mark Bagwell, you know, his past talking about stories growing up, Mark in the present, looking forward to the future. 
These are all amazing things. Uh, we originally were not planning to tape this week. I called up Jerry and I said, Jerry Hood, we got to talk, buddy, because we got to put this out there. Want to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. People want to hear as close to Mark as possible what is actually happening. They've heard the message. Now they're speculating. And that's where I, you know, when you and I talked about this off air, we were saying it's very, very important to set the record straight. This is not a question of somebody hitting, you know, rock bottom being their worst. Mark is actually in its greatest spirits ever, you know, even just from a few days ago, as far as hearing him, how he's talking, telling stories. These are all really great things. So note that he's really positive. He's energized. And man, he's going to be coming back like a house on fire. And, you know, can't wait to hear his perspective on everything. 